All right, we begin uh, lesson uh, number 11 in our series, Understanding and Obeying the Ten Commandments, our small group uh, series. As I said, uh, lesson number 11, we're going to be doing commandment number nine, and the title of this lesson, Truth Equals Integrity. So let's read the commandment, uh, the ninth commandment, as it is uh, written in Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. It says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And so this command uh, prohibits a false witness against someone else, especially in a court of law. Uh, it uses a serious legal application to put forth the everyday need to tell the truth, not just in court, but in everyday affairs as well. So um, what are uh, examples of ways that uh, we break this command? Different types of lying, if you wish. Number one, uh, perjury, lying under oath, falsifying legal records. Um, Peter the Apostle, for example, denying Jesus with an oath in Matthew uh, chapter 26. Another type of lie, concealment, holding back information that causes a false impression. For example, reporting an accident, but neglecting to report that alcohol uh, was in use. Uh, we see Abraham um, saying that Sarah was his sister, which was half true and half, you know, half true and half not true. Uh, he held back that she was also his wife in Genesis chapter 12, verses 11 to 19. Another type of lie is a false accusation when we accuse others of things based solely on suspicion or gossip or, or prejudice. Uh, Jesus, for example, was accused of being a glutton, a, a drunk, a rebel, a blasphemer, all of these things, uh, even a, a devil, uh, without any proof, of course. Another type of lie uh, is a conspiracy. When several people unite to plot or to cover up something so that the truth will not come out, uh, Rebecca and Jacob conspired to fool Isaac, right? Um, another type, a false witness, uh, an exaggeration or an outright lie concerning the value or the integrity of something or someone. Again, the example that I use is Satan's lie about the power of the forbidden fruit in Genesis chapter three, uh, verse five, uh, he, he lied. He told uh, Eve, oh, this will make you wise. This will do this and that. But what he didn't tell her was uh, it would also uh, ruin her life because it would lead to disobedience uh, to, uh, to God's command. Um, hypocrisy is another type of lying, to say one thing and knowingly do another. Again, I use Peter, Peter the apostle, refusing to eat with Gentile Christians when Jewish Christians uh, were present. We read about that in Galatians chapter two, uh, verse 11. Another type is false teaching. Those who promote and teach what is, uh, what is essentially incorrect or inaccurate or blatantly untrue. Um, an example, those teaching a different gospel uh, than what the apostles were teaching. In other words, they were teaching um, a, a false gospel and they knew that it was false and Paul calls them on this in Galatians chapter one, verse six to eight, and then also in Colossians chapter one, verse four. And of course there is lying, knowingly telling or suggesting a falsehood. Um, in the Bible we see Ananias and Sapphira who lied about the true amount of money that they received for a piece of land that they gave to the, uh, to the church. And we read about their lie and the consequences of their lie in, Act, uh, in Acts chapter five, uh, verses one to 10. So there may be other manners of, of dishonesty and lying, but these eight, uh, probably the, you know, the main categories, if you wish, of the different ways that people are dishonest, different ways that we lie. Now, not to lie, of course, is the desired effect, but, but why? Why this commandment? Why is lying a sin? What is the principle that supports this command? Well, there is one truth about everything. There is one truth about everything, and that is God's truth. What He says, uh, what He judges, this is what is true. In Psalm 33, verse four, the writer says, for the word of the Lord is upright, and all His work is done in 
faithfulness. Um, God's truth uh, is everlasting. Nothing changes His truth. Uh, Psalm 117 uh, verse two, and the truth of the Lord is everlasting. So there's not only one truth, which is God's truth, that truth remains. It, 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 never, it never changes. And also, His truth is contained in His word. In John 17, verse 17, uh, Jesus says, sanctify them in the truth, your word is truth in referring to God. And so God's truth, which never changes, is contained in His word. What is true about all life, about morals, about the universe, about the spiritual world, what is true about these things is contained in the Bible. Today, we, we're taught that truth is relative. Uh, whatever you see as truth, well, that's truth for you. Uh, if it works for you, if it feels good, if it doesn't hurt anyone, if it doesn't stop anyone else from pursuing their own particular idea of truth, then that truth is, is true for you now. It might not be true for you tomorrow, but it's true for you today. And so this idea of truth is seen everywhere in our society. I mean, you can't censor anything. Why? Because every, everyone is free to say whatever they, whatever they like. Uh, equal rights for everyone, even those who are in prison or who are here in this country illegally, for example. In other words, the, the person who is uh, in this country illegally uh, should have exactly the same rights as the person who is in this country legally. Uh, we're afraid to judge students' work because uh, it may lead to a, a person thinking that he's wrong. Uh, and we want everyone to feel good about themselves today, even if they fail basic skill tests. You know, politicians lie. And they call it something else. They call it disinformation or a dysfunctional statement. I remember hearing that once. You know, I, I didn't lie, I just made a dysfunctional statement. <laughs> As Christians, we may feel out of sync in this world because we hold the notion that there is a standard of truth by which people and things can be measured. And, 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 and we can know this standard of truth that, that gives us the power to make accurate evaluation of things. That I make an accurate evaluation of someone's work is not prejudice. It's not being unkind. You know, they call this quality. They call it enlightenment. Lying and falsehoods, falsehoods therefore, do two things to this principle this principle that there is one truth and it is everlasting and it does, it can determine the value and the quality of things, right? When we, when we throw this overboard, two things happens. One, it denies or it hides the truth, which in essence is like trying to hide or deny God himself. It's a form of blasphemy. And two, it darkens our own minds to the extent that we separate ourselves from the light of truth and salvation and we end up condemning ourselves. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12 uh, talks about that. And then principles that support this command, one, there's one truth about everything. And then two, truth equals integrity. That's why we shouldn't lie. That's why lying is wrong. Lying is destructive because truth equals integrity. And when we, when we make falsehoods, we degrade integrity. You know, how do we, how do we place value on something, right? Uh, you know, how, how, how do we place value on a, a thing? Well, uh, how beautiful it may be, how rare it is, how useful it can be, the purity of it. Gold, for example, right? We, we, value the, 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 we give value to that particular metal. Why? Because of its rarity and its beauty and its purity. And how do we therefore estimate the value of a person? Well, outwardly, of course, we look for beauty or strength, talent, intelligence. But inwardly, the value of a person is determined by their purity or their integrity. Integrity means wholeness or freshness or purity of character. And so the greater degree of integrity, 
the more valuable the individual. The degree of integrity is valued mainly by how honest we are in comparison to God who is totally truthful, who is totally pure. So every time you are involved in falsehood, your value, your personal value, your integrity goes down. It isn't just one big lie that makes you worthless. It's the thousands of little ones that ultimately make a person bankrupt in their personal integrity. And so every time we tell the truth, we are contributing to the value of our personal worth. And every time we lie, we are decreasing the value of our personal worth as, as people. Now, there are rewards for telling the truth. For example, in Proverbs uh, chapter 12, verses uh, 19 to 22, the writer says, truthful lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No harm befalls the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are His delight. Have you noticed the rewards there? What does the writer say? Salvation. There's one reward of telling the truth. There's no condemnation for truthful ones. When you tell the truth, you're not always looking over your shoulder. You're not always calculating. You know you've told the truth. Uh, in verse 20, he mentions joy. There's no guilty conscience for the honest person. There's peace of mind for the one who is basically truthful. In verse 29, uh, 21, rather, he talks about protection. No fear of evil, even when it threatens. You know, Jesus spoke truth and he was crucified, but he didn't dread evil. And then of course in verse 22 he talks about favor. God loves an honest man. Now there are also rewards that come from other people um, when we are uh, truthful. For example, we have credibility. People will value our input. They'll value us as people if they, if they understand or if they get the sense that we're, we're honest, that we tell the truth, that they have, their experience with us is that we're truthful and sincere uh, people. Also responsibility. Society searches out honest men and women as leaders, as people of responsibility. They want someone that they can trust, right? <laughs> you know, we, we have elections all the time. What are we looking for in those who lead us uh, you know, politically? Well, we're looking for somebody that we can trust, somebody who tells the truth. And of course, respect. An honest person is respected whether he or she is rich or poor, literate or totally uneducated. Their sincerity shines through beyond all these types of attributes. And so, when weighing the scales between truth and falsehood, comparing the results of each, we see that honesty isn't just the best policy, it really is, it's the only policy. I mean, what's second best to being truthful? <laughs> not, not being a liar, that, that doesn't come in second. Now, bearing false witness or lying is a sin which is done in a majority, a variety of ways rather as I mentioned at the beginning, conspiracy, false accusations, lying, so on and so forth. And it also violates several principles. First of all, it denies truth, which is a form of denying God, which is blasphemy. Secondly, it separates us from the light of truth and it makes us uh, 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 prisoners of, of the darkness, uh, a form of self-imprisonment, if you wish and it lowers our personal integrity or our value as individuals. And then I mentioned the rewards for honesty are great. Salvation, joy, peace, favor from men and God, and of course, a solid favorable standing among uh, other citizens, other individuals. So how do we improve our ability to tell the truth? A couple of, you know, a couple of tips, if you wish, on how to become more truthful as individuals. Well, number one, don't talk too much. Don't talk too much and you'll avoid instances of dishonesty. 
Uh, we read about that in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Number two, get the facts. Get the facts. Avoid believing or repeating something about someone else unless you have the facts. And then decide if the things that you've heard or that you've discovered are worth repeating. Most of the stuff that we hear about other people are, are usually not accurate. And if they are, we really have to make the decision, well, is it kind? Is it encouraging? Does it build up that individual? Does it help the person that I'm speaking to to say that about the other individual? You know, we have to make those decisions in order to become more truthful, more sincere as individuals. And then of course, decide in advance that you will tell the truth no matter what. Most times we lie because we're under pressure of some kind. And so we have to ask God to help us to tell the truth before we get into situations where we are uh, pressured to lie. Now, when we do lie, at least let, let's have a faith in God to forgive us, just like He forgave Peter and Abraham and Rebecca and Jacob and all the other liars who God worked with in spite of their dishonesty and their weaknesses in this area. And let's remember that the ultimate lie is thinking that we have no sin and no need of Christ. And the ultimate truth is that all who are honest with themselves will acknowledge that they are sinners and, and they do need the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away their sins every single day of their lives. So maybe in your life, you know, it's a time for honesty. I mean, true honesty with yourself. Perhaps you need forgiveness, perhaps uh, you need salvation. And of course, in order to receive those, the Bible tells us, the Bible, which is the truth, tells us to confess and acknowledge our faith in Jesus Christ and repent and be baptized in Acts chapter two, verse 38. Maybe it's time to acknowledge your dishonesty if you've claimed to be a Christian, but you've not lived like one, you've lived a lie. Well, in that case, we always encourage people to confess their sins. First John chapter one, verses seven to nine, acknowledge your sin and have confidence that as a Christian, God will continue to wash away your sins uh, with the blood of Christ. Well, if we have a need to tell the truth, uh, be honest with ourselves, let's do that. Let's be honest with others and especially let's be honest with God. And let's do that today. Today is the day that I'm going to become a more honest person. Today is the day when I will begin adding to my personal integrity and worth by telling the truth in all matters. All right, so that's our brief lesson here uh, on the ninth commandment. Uh, we're going to follow up with some disqu uh, discussion questions for your small groups. And we'll see you next time when we finish out our series. Question number one, is it ever right to tell a lie? Question number two, list three ways Christians tend to lie. Question number three, how would you confront someone who lied to you? Give three examples. Question number four, what leads you into making false statements? And how are you seduced into lying?